Well, hey guys, uh, I'm Lynn Hansen, and this is the North Park Life Group Ministry. I'm really glad to be sharing with you in this way. Um, we're in this awesome series called Indestructible, uh, and I'm really praying that uh, some of us will get a little more indestructible through this. I think we have that opportunity, don't you? We're talking about being able to stand when everything else falls. And the Bible says that Ephesians chapter 6, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Well, this weekend, uh, we looked at the second piece of armor, the breastplate of righteousness. And so you see I've got the camera down a little bit so that you can see that I'm wearing the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, the, uh, this, this is all about an, an attitude uh, that knows that it's accepted. I need to know that I'm acceptable to God. You need an indestructible attitude. The thing is, attitude is everything, and if your uh, attitude is not indestructible, you're not indestructible. And so he says, stand firm then with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Uh, the story we're looking at in our life groups this week is a picture of this attitude that knows that it's acceptable to God, and so nothing else can touch it. Now there's three components to storying, and that's what we're going to do is is tell you a story. The first thing I'm going to do is read you this story from Acts chapter 9. But uh, I want you to pay close attention because somebody's going to put down their notes and rebuild the story afterwards and retell it from memory and then you're all going to say what they, they missed. So uh, let me give you just a, a little bit of background to start with. Um, Saul was a killer of Christians. New Testament Saul was a killer of Christians. He believed that they were lying about Jesus, about what Jesus had done, and, and about seeing Jesus after he was alive. And they just believed, uh, he just believed that they were lying about having a relationship with him. You know, people still do that. They think, they apparently think we're lying. And so uh, he believed, though, that they needed to die. He believed that the Old Testament law that he lived by said that they needed to die because this was blasphemous to God, what they were doing. And so here he was, he was on a trip and he was headed to Damascus to go and arrest some Christians. Uh, he felt this was his God-given duty. And lo and behold, guess who he ran into? He ran into the living Jesus. And uh, he had this experience with Jesus face to face. And now you fast forward a little ways into chapter 9. And he's a believer now, who wouldn't be? And he's gone from uh, living in fear and anger and having to suppress Christianity and having to suppress those who believe in Jesus to knowing that Jesus is alive and, and knowing that because Jesus is alive, he also will live forever. And so he is solid as a rock now. He's got the breastplate of righteousness on and... Uh, he knows that he's right with God and nobody can take that away. Nobody can mess with that. He doesn't really have to please anybody except God. And so that's where we start the sort of story at, at Acts chapter 9 and verse 19. And it says, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. So he's a believer now and he's spending time with the, the other believers. It says, at once then he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't this the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And, and hasn't he come to, to here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? You know, isn't he still on the warpath and, and going to uh, arrest the Christians? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. After many days had gone by, the Jews conspired to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him so he couldn't sneak out, you know. And, uh, but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples there, but... They were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple, not believing he was a believer in Christ. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. 
He talked and he debated with the Grecian Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to, uh, to Tarsus. When the church, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. All right, now, put down your notes, if you would, please, and somebody retell that story from memory. Everybody else keep track of what they missed so you can rebuild the story afterward. Go ahead and do those two things now, please. you have retold the story, someone has, and all of you have gotten together then and rebuilt the story together. <clears throat> Here's some discussion questions, uh, very important stuff. Question one, this is history. This is a historical event that took place. God has great purpose for having it in the Word of God, for including it there. What do you think the primary purpose of this story is? Go ahead and talk about that, would you please? Well, you know, in case you missed it, this is a story of Saul, uh, a man who was so sure and certain that he was acceptable to God that he willingly faced death. He willingly faced the threats of religious people. And he even faced the rejection of other real believers. And he still, watch that now, he still kept boldly preaching about Jesus. He wasn't defeated. It didn't break his heart, tear him down. It didn't ruin him so that he didn't preach anymore. He kept going. Question two. How many different trials and tribulations can you count Saul going through in this little handful of verses here? How many trials and tribulations can you count that he is going through? How many different things can you name there in this little story that, that Saul experienced. Go ahead and, and look at that together and share some of the things that you see that he went through. Okay, great. Uh, notice that uh, I'm going to have you look at several verses, verse 22, verse 27, 28, and 29. Look carefully at those verses. Put your eye on those for a minute. Question number three. What was the result of the many persecutions that Saul endured? What happened in his life due to those persecutions? Go ahead and talk about that, please. Okay, well, the answer to question number three is just flat out that Saul grew more and more powerful, more and more bold, more and more open with his testimony and his preaching. That means that he grew an attitude that knows it's accepted. You know, his attitude was absolutely indestructible. Do you see that? He stood firm, and it's because his heart wasn't set on being accepted by people. You know, Galatians 1.10 is so perfectly clear Paul says right there, the same guy, Saul who became Paul, finally changed his name. He, he says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10, if I was trying to please people, I wouldn't be a Christ follower. I wouldn't even be one. But as it is, I'm a Christ follower, and so I quit trying to please people. You know, And so that's the deal here. His attitude was indestructible because his heart was not set on uh, pleasing people or, or being accepted by people people. Stand firm then with the belt, uh, excuse me, the breastplate of righteousness in place. <laughs> so question number four, um, share some victories that you've experienced in uh, choosing God's acceptance over people acceptance. Uh, I would, we would just love to hear some victories that you have had in this area of uh, finding acceptance in God instead of people and making choices related to that. Go ahead and share some of those things, would you please? Well, question number five, uh, what impacted you most in the story or this discussion about the story? Uh, and 
you know, most importantly, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this gotcha moment that God taught you through this story? Um, great stuff, man. Great stuff. And an attitude that knows it's acceptable to God. Now listen, uh, I want you guys to have the rest of a great life group, and I will see you soon.